All right, this is going to be a, a very rare video response by me. This is not something I normally do, but this is going to be a video response to uh, Is Taxation Theft Part 2 by a uh, YouTube user named Ann Kentavad. If I'm saying that correctly, I hope. If not, I apologize. Um, I have never heard or seen this user before. I was completely unfamiliar with them. Uh, a subscriber of mine basically forwarded me the video uh, without comment, and uh, I watched it and decided I would make a video response, even though that's not what I normally do. And uh, in the video he's referencing, about, apparently a year ago he made a video questioning whether taxation was theft or not, uh, and uh, this was basically a follow-up, and it was less, it was less about whether taxation is theft or not, more about the his thoughts, or your thoughts, I'm sorry, my pronouns are going to be all mixed up here because I'm addressing both you specifically and also my subscribers, so I apologize if any confusion that arises from that. Um, but he's basically relating, you know, he got a lot of thumbs down, he just got a lot of people just say, without prevent, providing much of an argument, just saying, think about it, cognitive dissonance. That actually made up the majority of, of your, his video. And actually, that part of it, I tend to agree with. Uh, people need to really always be examining their own beliefs, uh, and I'll be the first to admit there are areas in what I agree with where I'm less certain than in other areas. Uh, I also tend to share, if not as far, at least some of your misgivings with objectivism. I'm certainly not an objectivist. I am a market anarchist, which means they're minarchist typically, and I, you know, kind of anathema to me in that in that sense but yeah in the broader I'm right you're wrong uh, anyone who doesn't believe Ayn Rand is a delusional maniac I mean some of them actually go that far uh, that's it's kind of uncomfortable and I do agree that there's kind of a cult thing with uh, objectivists not all of them but a lot of them and it, it, as much as I actually respect a lot of the things Ayn Rand said and wrote uh, it's kind of off-putting, and it's just not where I spend most of my time. But rather than address that part of your video, which I think is the main purpose of this video, of your video really is to address the attackers, I actually want to go back and talk about uh, the idea that property is theft or not. Or, I'm sorry, th taxation is theft, which you didn't really uh, go into that much in this video, which is fine because I think that's not what it was really about. I have not watched your original video, and I can't. As you can see in my lovely decor here, I'm actually at work, and um, while I do have internet access, it is not uh, sufficient to watch a YouTube video. Um, so I am, I'm going to go off the uh, what I could gather from 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 your latest video that uh, you view that taxation is not theft because um, you say well, property is a concept, uh, and concepts. Uh, like, you use the example, you don't have property rights if you're the only person who thinks that you have private property and everyone else disagrees. Uh, that there has to be some kind of consensus, that some, the opinion of the rest of the people around you. And, and since most people view taxation as not theft, then it's not theft. Uh, now, I, I kind of agree in the sense that if, if, the people around you decide to coerce you or to take your property or to do anything to you really, uh, unless you have the martial ability to physically resist them, then any kind of appeal to ethics or or uh, explanation of, uh, of rights is not going to do you any good. But I, I would be hesitant to take the majoritarian view and just say whatever that happens to be then is is reality or we, we're going to define our terms in terms of what the majority opinion is. Uh, well, you don't actually say the majority opinion. Maybe you did in the original video. I don't know. But here, here's the problem I have with all these every normative or ethical situation uh, that is defined by uh, some kind of consensus, majority, whatever. Um, first of all, in the video I saw, you said, well, if you're the only person who thinks that you own property, then, well, 
we're well past that stage. I mean, we could make that hypothetical, but there's more than one person who believes the taxation is theft. I don't know how many. I'm sure it's a minority who would call it that, but it's more than just one. Uh, second, the implication uh, to be a consequentialist here of what you're saying is that uh, there is no crime if there is consensus that what happens is okay. So uh, there's a, actually a pretty popular little meme or cartoon going around. I think that was actually made by a liberal. It's uh, top of a Mesoamerican pyramid, presumably the Aztec, maybe the Maya, although I don't think it was really anthropology uh, accurate in terms of the anthropology there. But uh, And uh, they're sewing up on the altar and they're getting their heart cut out by the priest. And there's two other, you know, Indians sitting down there, Maya, the Aztec, whatever. And one, one's looking at the other one. He says, it's not a perfect system, but it's the best that we have. And I look at someone being sacrificed against their will. Uh, you know, someone who doesn't want to be sacrificed, somebody who's being killed, and they don't see it as something that they're willing to do, but they're being coerced to do it. Uh, I see that as murder. And the fact that there might be a huge majority of people around them who don't see it that way, I'm not going to just sit back and say, well, it's fine, it's justice, because it's, it's not a crime, it's not murder, because there's a consensus almost among everybody that what's going on is not only not a crime, but actually necessary. Uh, they probably believe that absent this sacrifice, either Kukulkan or or the sun god or something won't rise, or there won't be rain, or society will fall apart, all of which is false, but it doesn't matter because they believe it. And so uh, your your argument that, well, taxation isn't theft, would then have to say that human sacrifice, if it's performed by a majority of the population or assented to by a majority of the population, or the majority of some electorate or whatever, is justified then. Uh, and so... Would you, would you, if if you watched the movie Apocalypto, did you root for the king and you know the high priests on top of the pyramid? In which that movie is fairly accurate, and that, that sort of thing happened. I mean, there were little details that were wrong. But would you say that the guy who was, I, I was rooting for the guy who was painted blue, who who was getting his heart cut out and ran away. Uh, but if you think about it, I mean, he's on top of a pyramid. There's about a dozen guys around him all wearing fancy clothes. They all think that what is happening to him uh, is justified. And uh, there's a huge crowd of hundreds or thousands of people cheering their, cheering like crazy. So I'd say there's a general consensus there that what's about to happen is just A-OK. -okay. Uh, but I still rooted for the guy who was painted blue. I wanted him to escape. And I would have called what happened to his, his friends in the movie if one of them escapes. But... I would recall what happens to his friends, murder, but you apparently would have to not be so sure that it's murder because there's a consensus here. I'm a huge consensus, and I'm picking the Aztecs and the Maya or whatever, but I don't need to be that specific. I mean, the Romans did this. They executed people with gladiators, all kinds of... The Druids were executing people. Uh, we execute people, but we call it war. Uh, I mean, literally, just execute people, we call it war, we execute people who are criminals, and you're, I mean, I'm assuming then that you favor capital punishment, uh, I'm assuming that you don't have any qualms about wars, since even though a lot of people don't agree with maybe the specific war or the specific campaign, they agree with the idea of more in general that if the government's going to fight, if people get killed, I mean, oh well, that's not murder, it's not a crime, and it's not something to worry about. At least it's not something to characterize as homicide, or, or at least murder, a, a, a pejorative homicide. I guess homicide is a little bit broader. Um, and I don't know. Would you would you have said that the the guy who runs away from being sacrificed is just getting all in a huff? I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, so that's kind of a consequentialist approach, um, but. We can also look at it, well, here's what I think the problem with that. These, these problems that appeal to uh, the majority are extremely, 
extremely problematic. Um, this is this is basically a similar to all kinds of democratic institutions because when you when you're gonna stand on the, an appeal to the opinions of others, then how we gerrymander who's actually being counted alters the the goodness or the badness of a situation. So. Uh, if we were to say go to some libertarian enclave, say in New Hampshire, where literally most of the people are anarchists, I'm not saying all of New Hampshire is like that, but there are certain areas that are, certain neighborhoods, maybe just certain houses, uh, would you then say, well, those people, I mean, you could go to them and say, we're going to tax you, and they say, I'm not paying this taxation is theft, and they count their neighbors, and they all say the same thing, would you then say, well, then taxation is theft, and you can't be, can't be taxed. But then you could but then you could argue, well, uh, I'm going to count not just you, but your other neighbors who happen to be Democrats and they believe in taxation, or Republicans too, because they also believe in taxation. And the problem is that we can gerrymander this and get any kind of uh, answer to the question that we want, basically. I can say the only electorate that matters is the libertarians, or the people who happen to agree with what I do and not the people who agree with what you do. And it's interesting because then we have a situation where the exact same action can be considered both theft and not theft based on who's voting. Uh, and you didn't explicitly say that it would be decided by voting, but I mean, how do you decide what the consensus is, what the majority thinks, whatever, whatever the appeal to something other than reason or some kind of rigorous uh, deduction or study of what's going on, if you're just going to say whatever the populace, well, the populace of what? Around you, the whole world, that, <laughs> I mean, if, if you're, if you, if you're pro-abortion or pro-choice, if that's how you prefer to say it, would you say that, well, if the majority of people around you consider abortion to be murder and a crime, and that they're going to execute any woman who kills your baby and a doctor who kills the baby too, would you say, well, if the majority of people believe that, then it is a crime, it is murder, and the woman should uh, suffer the consequences? Would you? Is that your position? And I mean, I don't know how you feel about the pro-life issue, or but it doesn't matter. The point is, it's illustrating that uh, you're opening a whole can of worms here. And the other thing is, people can change. This is, I mean, maybe you don't think the taxation is stuff that maybe most people don't. But someday, it's hypothetically possible that most people will think taxation is theft. And at some point, you will have whatever rubric you use to decide what the consensus is, you will go from saying taxation is not theft to taxation is theft, and literally the only thing that will change will be one person. I mean, if you think, if you're just going to be a simple majoritarian, which I don't know if you are or not, but uh, if right now only, you know, 3% people can characterize taxation as theft. Someday it's hypothetically possible that 50.001% will think that taxation is theft. At which point do you change your mind? Did all of a sudden the governments be, have be, were, were criminal all along, or did they only just now become criminal? Uh, are you still going to argue for your case? Or are you going to say, well, yeah, the majority thinks that taxation is theft, but I think government is necessary, and so I am going to insist the taxation is not theft, even though the majority or the consensus or the plurality think otherwise. So I don't think you can chide. Uh, the way I look at it is uh, I don't like ethical arguments that much because the whole philosophy, ethics, and morality are areas that I don't feel that comfortable in. Uh, but I like to look at it in, in terms of economics. The, the, the claims of why taxation is necessary uh, Mostly, I find very unconvincing that, that there's market failures, that there are certain goods that can't be provided except by the government. Uh, I don't buy into that. Uh, I don't think it's true. Uh, also, there's a whole slew of problems. The government is abusive. The government has no incentive to do a good job or different incentives uh, than market institutions. Uh, that, that's, that's a different question altogether. And I, now I'd like to offer my take. The one thing I, I don't like about uh, well, not the one thing, but one of the problems, one of the things I think you're missing is that uh, although you're not an individualist, I think you have to accept the idea that, okay, that's probably a bad phrasing. You should consider the possibility 
that maybe of all the people who vote on an issue, the person who is most affected should probably have more say than somebody else. So, to go back to our sacrificial victim, it may be true that the vast majority of people around him accepts as normative his sacrifice, but he does not. And I would say that the person who's about to have his heart cut out to make sure the sun rises or the eclipse goes away uh, has more say in the matter than the random person in the background who's never met him before. Or somebody else who literally he will never see. I mean, this is when you're going to cite, there, there are people living all over the world that you and I will never meet, will never know about us, who will never be directly affected and will only be in the most minuscule, unmeasurable sense, even indirectly affected by either of us, and yet their opinion on a matter uh, could be a matter of life and death or theft or you know, freedom, too. Uh, I would say that uh, we should weight the individual's involved, directly involved, more. But how much is a question? There are actually, and I'm not saying you're a socialist or a Marxist or whatever, but when I've talked to anarcho-syndicalists, they will sometimes acknowledge the idea of direct democracy is a little bit silly because shouldn't the people who are most directly involved have more say than people who are not involved at all or much less involved? And sometimes they'll say, yeah, and I have a phrase before they say, you should have a vote that is in uh, proportion to your involvement. But that, that begs the question, how much... So the person who's going to get his heart cut out goes, well, I, I deserve 60% of the vote in that. And so he's going to, you know, he'll be the majority, whatever he decides. But here's the problem with, with that as well. We can't use democracy or voting or consensus to decide. Consensus absent unanimity. If you have unanimity, literally everyone agrees, then there's no question. Uh, but... If there's any disagreement at all, which there certainly is in terms of taxation, even if it's a small minority, it's still a minority, uh, then there's it's disputed how much the electorate even matters. How much does my vote versus matter versus, versus that of the people around me? There's people in my immediate neighborhood and the farther neighborhoods and people in California or in Palau or New Guinea. I mean, how much do their vote? And without really elaborating as to why you're not in a position to be um, saying uh, that there's a consensus, there's not a consensus, uh, that this is normative, this is okay, this is ethical. Uh, I think the, the point of the words we're using here, theft, murder, okay, I use murder, not you, I'm sorry. Uh, we're describing physical and actual events, and the way we characterize them is based on the parties involved. How do they view it? So if, uh, say, uh, I, I do a wealth transfer, I transfer money to a third party, either a person or an institution. Whether that's theft or not depends on how I view it and how they view it. Which you're 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 correct. I mean that that's that's the part about what you say that I really agree with. Like the parties involved need to agree. But uh, for instance, what if uh, you know I'm an agnostic person. I'm not religious at all. But a lot of religious people they go to church and uh, they give money to the church. They just hand it over. And I might look at that and say, look, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think that they're being victims of propaganda, they're just giving away their hard-earned money that they, they could use otherwise, and they've been um, brainwashed and giving it. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't know what those people really think. I don't know. Maybe they are aware of all the arguments I have, and they still accept it as okay. Maybe they are agnostic, and they just think it, that they'd rather pay the money than go through the social ostracization. Sorry. Dyslexic. Uh that they would endure if they didn't give the money. Uh, or maybe they're just really wealthy and it makes them feel happy to donate, which is true with a lot of people. Uh, I'm not in a position to say. So if they're giving it voluntarily, I'm not going to call it taxation. and You shouldn't call it taxation either. We could surely, certainly shouldn't call it theft. If, on the other hand, they don't want to give money and 
the deacon and the choir boys are, you know, like big gladiators or something, and they come and they say, oh, look, if you don't uh, give us a tithe, if you don't give us 10% of your money right now or everything in your wallet, we'll break your legs. And so they give it over. Then I would say, well, that is theft. He was coerced. And this is the kind of the, the little thing that uh, idea that I didn't see in your in your previous or in this latest video. Maybe you addressed it in your first video. I don't know. But the whole idea of voluntarism and coercion. Um, if a person says, "I'm worried that the world's going to end," and I think that if you cut out my heart, it will save the world, and I I love my family and I want that to happen. So please cut out my heart to prevent the um, you know make sure that the rains come. Then I would not call that murder, and I would not, you know, I mean that that would be that would be not homicide, and I I wouldn't be against it if I find it crazy, but if, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it murder. If on the other hand the person is begging and screaming not to be killed and saying that they don't want to die, that they think it's a crime that they want to live, but it happens anyway because there's a consensus of the people around him, then I would call that murder. Now they're going to get away with it because they believe in it, probably. But that doesn't mean you call it something other than what it is. And this goes to theft as well. You believe in government? You be or, well, I don't know. You never actually said that. I'm assuming that you do. Uh, but you believe that taxation is not theft. But I don't believe taxation is not theft. I believe taxation is theft. And I'm not alone in that. And so when the government comes and coerces me to pay, uh, that's the fact that they're coercing me makes it theft. The fact that I view it that way makes it theft. And if you don't, uh, that doesn't mean that, well, it's fine and dandy because there's a difference. Most Americans, most people don't view taxation as theft and they pay it happily. But that, it's a leap. It's a leap to say, well, most people believe it, a majority, even a large majority. Hence, if it happens to you, then you can't complain. What's, I mean, that that kind of majoritarian tyranny will, will justify anything and everything. It's been used to justify everything, and not and not incorrectly. Not if you, if that's what you believe. If you believe that morality is determined by some kind of vote, even even one that's implied or you know not actually taken, which of course is the case here. They never actually had a vote on whether taxation is theft or not, uh, but then you are consequently uh, accepting the possibility and in, in practice actually the reality that anything uh, is is moral, is okay, is ethical, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I mean, are you, I don't know, have you thought of that? I mean, I don't know, maybe you have and you have a, a good excuse for it. Maybe you think, well, uh, there, there tends to be whenever libertarians talk about these really dire consequences, there tends to be a kind of a yeah, you're talking about Stalin or Mao, but I mean, we're talking about Western democracies here, like the United States or Canada or Western Europe, and they don't do well, they actually do do pretty horrible things. They do actually kill people rather extradition. I mean, Obama killed an American citizen without trial, without even charging anything, Anwar al-Awlaki. And actually, there's a lot of people who think that that was murder, and a lot of people who think that it was okay. Uh, but it's very easy for politicians and people in the government to just stand and say, look, I was elected, hence anything I do is codified as majoritarianly accepted. I mean, they, they you know, the emperors of China used to say that they have a mandate from heaven, that, that they can do basically whatever, and this is our... our in the medieval period, the kings would say, I have divine authority. Whatever I do, ipso facto, is correct. And we have the same thing right now, except instead of appealing to God or uh, the gods or the ancestors or something, they, they just say, well, the majority, which is not actually the case because it's never a majority of the population that elects a president or the government in general. It's always the majority of some electorate, which is never the majority of the whole population. And of course, then there's the whole problem is we don't know why it is people vote. And people could vote for Obama because they hate McCain, which I, I, I would be willing to do that. I thought 
as much as I hate Obama, I prefer him to McCain. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I hence endorse anything he might ever do. But that is how they characterize it. That is how the government will say, hey, and I, I've actually seen congressmen literally say, you can't argue with me because I'm elected and you're not. So everything I say has this uh, aura of um, moral invincibility uh, and righteousness just because I got the majority of some electorate uh, in a district that he was able to gerrymander or his party was able to gerrymander to guarantee his uh, election. And I'm... I'm actually thinking of, of a specific person, but this is in general what actually happens. Um, so the Western democracies, they are capable of all the brutality, if not more. I mean, if we actually tried to count how many foreigners the American government has killed, it's actually a gigantic number. Uh, I don't think it quite has reached the level of the communists or the, the Nazis, but it's getting there, especially if you, if, you, well, if you look at a longer time. I guess maybe that's not fair, but because the Nazis only had 12 years and you know, the U.S. government's had a lot longer than that. But um, that, 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 again, is consequentialist. But I, I look at it if, just real theoretically, A and B make an exchange, A and B agree to exchange, then it's not theft. I mean, clearly it is um, just a mutual exchange. It's a transaction. Scenario two, uh, A and B both don't want an exchange. Well, then... The exchange won't happen. It's a new point. This would be like if everybody, literally everybody, agrees the taxation is not theft. If literally everybody agreed the taxation was not theft, we wouldn't have me be having this uh, argument or this discussion rather, and you would never have gotten all those thumbs downs. Option two: Person A uh, takes from Person B. Person B does not agree to the transaction. Person A does. Obviously, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. What do you call that? Well, the word that we use for that is theft. It doesn't matter if, uh, I mean, what, what, what would you call it as to distinguish it from a, a consensual transaction? I, mean, I don't think there is a word. Is there a word for something that one party doesn't agree with, but a, a, another party does, but uh, there's a, a, some kind of consensus or majority of people who say that the transfer is okay, what do you call that as opposed to where they both agree? It's called theft. When one, when one party doesn't agree to the transfer, it's theft. And that is what happens uh, when people don't agree. And the other other interesting thing here is, yeah, there aren't that many people who would say that taxation is theft. I have no idea how many, but it's, it's I mean, it's it's in the millions now, I think, but in the low millions. So it's, it's minority, probably. But then there's lots of people who think that we're taxed too much, who think that they should keep more of their money. And with, what, what do you say for those people that, well, that, it still doesn't matter because uh, the government is imbued with supreme moral authority. You never said that, but I mean, they people think government should exist. They Whoever is there got elected there. I mean, so are they entitled to anything they might declare if the government just said we're taking everything, uh, which is suicidal on their part, and it's unusual, but it hypothetically could happen when you just shrug your shoulders and say, well, they're, they're the government, and they consent, or if all the people said that's absurd, we're not going to do that, you know, like, 90% of the people, no, that's not true, 90% of the people who called Congress for the Obamacare were against, obviously, the people who wanted it didn't call, but it, would, would you just say, so that's a bad example, scratch that, but, uh, Would you say that if if most people think we should be taxed ten percent less, that ten percent of our taxes are theft or, or, or what? I mean, I don't understand how you. I, I look at it as if if a person believes in taxes and believes that they're not theft, and the government and then they give them to the government, then I wouldn't call it theft because they're voluntarily giving it. But if they don't think that they owe it to the government, if they think that they have a right to the money that they earn, and they don't want their money to be spent to build predator drones to invade Iran and to kill people, or to pay for welfare, or to pay for abortions that they don't agree with, or to pay for uh, the cops to go around and kill people's dogs because they're smoking weed, or, I mean, la 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 I mean, if you're a liberal, if you're conservative, we can, or if you're a libertarian, we can all find things that the government does that we disagree with. Then uh, I say that that is theft to that person. And they're, they're 
consent or lack thereof in the transaction is the important element in how you characterize and how you define the transaction, not how the people around them vote. I agree with you that if the people around them all accept the coercion, if they all say that it's fine, then, then uh, how he defines what happens to him is not going to do him any good. I agree with that. That's the whole point of why we call it taxation and stuff, though, is we want to get people to think. I mean, we want to get people to say, hey, maybe this isn't right. I mean, maybe this is uh, bad. In, in the United States, it's very common to call government a necessary evil. The libertarian insight is that it's an unnecessary evil. At least, I mean, that's how I look at it. And how would you suggest that we go about argumenting that, that, that we should say, uh, since the majority of people believe the government is legitimate, then the government is legitimate, and so my argument is that the government is automatically legitimate. Everything it does is automatically legitimate. Uh, taxation is not theft. Uh, everything about it is fine, uh, so we should get rid of it because, or we should reduce it because, then I have no leg to stand on because I'm just conceding that whatever it does is okay. It doesn't make any sense uh, from the point of view of trying to advocate any position. That, that's kind of ancillary to what you said, and I'm sorry, this video is long. I tend to ramble. I was going to write this out to try and pre prevent that from happening, and I'm at work, and I'm not going to be able to do that, so... Uh, Yes. The the critical thing in defining the transaction is what, what are the people involved, directly involved, say, not, not the votes of those around them. That's a very problematic methodology for defining things anyway, because how do we gerrymander who gets to vote in defining something determines what that answer is. Also, who counts the votes, that's the other thing. Again, you didn't directly apply appeal to direct democracy or democracy generally in your video. But when you refer to consensus or whatever, uh, any kind of majority, majoritarianism, then that is, I mean, de facto what you're talking about. And I'm, I'm assuming you'd be okay with that. If I've, if I've erred, you know, let me know. But anyway, that's it. As I say as I stop recording a 33-minute video. Sorry, man. If you watch the whole thing, I'll be impressed.